Hello everyone and welcome to our episode of Fintech Garden and today I'm pleased to introduce Samba Boib who is a founder of Fintech Wrap-Up and also is working as a product manager at, at the, the payment factory, Payments Factory and today we're going to discuss a pretty neat topic which is e-wallets. I think there is a lot of confusion between different structures for the fintechs. Well, when it's a bank it's quite clear, you're the bank, but then when we have other forms or financial institutions, it's really hard to distinguish and understand what is this. And today we're discussing e-wallets. And my first question to you, Sam, what do you think e-wallet is? What is your definition? Hey, Igor. Um, first of all, thank you for inviting me to join this podcast. And as you mentioned it very correctly, as technology grows and advances, it's very difficult sometimes to understand the, the line between wallets and the banking apps, as well as the payments apps. So where they are, what they do, how you differentiate yourself. And in my opinion, um, the wallets, well, I think uh, when you say wallet, most people now it quickly imagine Apple Pay, Google Pay, um, PayPal. However, there are many different types of wallets. If you think, for example, about Uber and what they're offering, to a certain sense, uh, Uber payment services is also sort of a wallet because where uh, there you can uh, save your money. However, they're not regulated as banks. That's why I think from the main difference between wallets and some other banking applications or payment applications is the mainly about the regulation because from technology perspective, now wallets are so advanced, basically they are offering even more features and solutions than the regular banks are doing. That's why I think it's mostly about regulatory perspective, but for the rest, I would say uh, customers should not be worried much about the rest um, until the moment when they, let's say, start saving some money with the wallets because again goes back to regulation uh wallets may be not as safe as uh, banks from financial regulatory perspective but from the rest uh, i think they are basically the same and offering the same services and solutions one definition that i'm trying to use sometimes is a definition the wallet is a payment instrument and when you go into other institutions as a new banks challengers and banks it's a storage for the money so usually e-wallet is providing really easy to use the payment instrument. Like it's almost no brainer. And it's uh, for the first uh, approach is designed for easier payments and easier usage. And sometimes it's kind of aggregating other payment instruments under the umbrella to provide more seamless way. And you mentioned, you mentioned Apple Pay and Google Pay. Do you see any differences or how we can highlight how it differs from other platforms? Uh, compared to, I don't know, usual wallets? I think the biggest difference between Apple Pay and Google Pay, they are pass-through wallets, so-called pass-through wallets, where you usually add your banking cards or payment card. Let's say if you have a Revolut account, uh, you can attach your cards and in your everyday life, use Apple Wallet, for example, to make payments. I personally use a lot of Apple Wallet in my day-to-day -to -day life to uh, uh, store uh, my card information and then make a payment. Uh, as you know, they tokenize your card information and save it, save it in the wallet itself and make it very easy to make the payments. However, by itself, Apple Wallet and as well as Google Wallet, they do not offer financial services. They simply, as you mentioned, store your information, your financial and personal information and help you to do the transaction, simply pass through. I think this is the biggest difference. So do not expect from, let's say, Google Wallet to issue a card unless Google becomes a financial institution itself. It's once again the, the example with the exception because Apple with the United States region actually is providing an Apple card. So it's a little bit e ecosystem and then they extend in for issuing, but uh, just to make sure that everyone is aware. Apple is not financial institution. They are not holding any licenses and they actually rely on the third parties to issue the card. So I don't recall which exactly bank they're using, but that's the way how they work. They usually create infrastructure and the leverage in the vendors. So, yeah. Igor, I would like to highlight one moment here. If we're talking about wallet, then again, I think if I am not mistaken, if I understand it correctly, Apple does not, does not offer cards through its Apple Wallet, it offers it through Google uh, Apple Pay solution. You know, Apple Pay is, I think, a different solution that uh, or different product that 
uh, Apple is offering. And on the other hand, as you said, yeah, it's, it differ- differentiates from region to region. So the US is the home country of the Apple. That's why in the first place, they launch all the products, services, solutions in that region. Then slowly they expand to other regions. Definitely Google offers more uh, products in, in the US and including cards, pay later and other solutions. Actually, uh, since it's ecosystem, so basically they aid, like uh, as an Apple user, you can have an Apple card and yes, you can use it through the Apple Pay, which is tokenization service. But in the same way, I I think it's something that a lot of customers don't have a visibility because it's available in the United States. They have pretty neat, like a spending expense functionality and transactions. And technically they even pushing right now other vendors or other card issuer to extend the functionality of the wallet. Let's say you have a card with Revolut, you actually see transactions, you can see whatever was declined, it's less. So Apple is kind of building up on top of the wallet, Apple Pay and other financial. So in the in this case, do you feel like tech giants, they becoming the competitors for the fintechs? Because Having an Apple with their resources, with their ability to leverage third parties, banks, Apple Pay functionality, are they in competition with other wallets? What do you think from the market perspective? Initially, you know, several years ago, I was thinking, yes, these companies, these giants, Apple, Googles, they are, I thought they were definitely creating some competition to payment institutions and banks because at one point, uh, Google also announced they are partnering with certain banks starting to offer their own cards and their accounts. However, last couple of uh, years, uh, the experience showed that it's not the case. So yes, Apple tried, Google also tried to become financial institutions themselves, starting offering uh, their accounts, cards with certain partners. However, I think they didn't see the potential in this because again, uh, Apple's partner, uh, Goldman, if I'm not mistaken it was Goldman Sachs Sachs. yeah Yeah. they 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 said like uh, they're losing huge amounts of money with the the card program they said like they 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 are selling this to some other providers then uh, after some time I heard that Google they also canceled the plans to launch their own cards and account they said no we will just become a platform for financial institutions to use our platform to we become the middleman and we are earning fine there. That's why we are not going very deep and we do not become the financial institution ourselves. And Google did the same with their buy now pay later solution. You know, at one point they said also, they uh, they said like, we are not doing this. We again, we will become a middleman, spend our partnerships with the other providers, let them use our solutions and we are in there in the middle. That's totally fine. So now I think they tried they saw like it's better to earn as a middleman and they said like, you know, we will not become a financial institution. We will remain as technology partner. We will, of course, work on technology solutions for financial institutions, but we will not become financial institution ourselves. And I think this is the best approach. Why not? You, you are still earning your money. You're still getting your share. So it's fine. So they provide in some space for other companies to innovate, I think. And another thing thing that I was like uh, trying to understand, uh, if you take a look on Apple Pay, PayPal, they provide in really neat P2P payments. And that's yeah. one of the part maybe why PayPal becomes so, so popular because uh, before, like 20 years ago, when PayPal started to roll out this functionality, it was one of the easiest way to do the cross-border payments because mm. you have Apple Pay wallet and then someone in another country and then you basically send in the money without the yeah. cross border. Do you yeah. think that nowadays uh, P2P payments uh, are actually a part of the requirements for any wallet? Like, is it making it successful nowadays? In my opinion, this is one of the most critical features. You are right. And why I say this, because the launch of Visa Direct, you know, and MasterCard uh, move, it's basically the part of this movement for peer to peer-to-peer uh, payments and transfers. Because when you are using Visa Direct or MasterCard Move, you are directly sending card-to-card transactions and it's instant, very instant. So uh, that's why this shows the potential that even biggest card providers see and uh, understand that you must have this feature. And, you know, I am from the region. I am from Uzbekistan originally, even though currently I am in Europe. And in Uzbekistan, peer-to-peer is something that we do in 
daily life. So basically we send the money transfers through the card numbers. We don't use account numbers or such thing. When I moved to Europe, it was like strange for me when I have to do transfer money through the account numbers or court or IBAN. Like I'm like, what? Why, why should I do this? In my country, I do only with a card number. I don't need anything else or phone number. That's it. That's enough. I think I now with a direct with Visa Direct and some other solutions from providers, I can see that peer-to-peer -peer becoming more common even in these regions, in Europe, in the US. And moving forward, I think if you want to launch a wallet product, you must have this solution, uh, especially if you are going after uh, retail customers. I think it's pretty neat to use uh, the cards as a reference uh, because I'm also Ukrainian. And in Ukraine, it was popular and still popular to reference with the card. And the explanation should be here. Uh, actually, the banks did a pretty cool trick. They used the integration between them to look up the customers rather than to leverage the network for the payments, which makes yeah. kind of the tool for look up for the person. And Absolutely. then you are actually not exposing your card. So someone who are you giving the card number, they can you cannot use it online. Yeah. But in yeah. the same way, they are reducing the cost because the transfer actually is not settled between Visa and the bank, actually settled between two financial institutions. And usually the banking rails is really cheap. So uh, certain banks in Ukraine, they are providing this functionality for free. So you have no charge, no fees if you do the P2P with a card. And what is really good, uh, since the technology is advancing, it's almost real-time payments. So you don't need to wait until the bank uh, day is open. Like you can do at midnight, sending money to your friend after the, I don't know, going out and paying for something. So it, it makes it... Can we say this is like uh, the same idea behind open banking? Do you think? Open banking, I'm reading it differently, actually. Like I'm coming from technology standpoint and we've been implementing the open banking in Bahrain. So I would say open banking by its nature is um, actually pushing the banks or organizations to expose the data and to control over the financial instruments of the customers. Because if we think like the bank own not just money, but also the tool, how you operate in with those money. And open banking is saying like, okay, you are rendering the services, you're making some margin. So at least expose the data to use this uh, instrument to other third parties. I don't know, your homekeeping application, like you can collect whatever what transactions. So by nature is different. Yes, you can initiate the payments from the open banking, but the essence is a little bit different. I yeah, 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 fair. Yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. Another topic which I think is cool, and you mentioned that is tokenization. Because another great example of the wallet application, surprisingly, is Amazon. Because when actually the card is collected, and that's a pretty neat trick which technology companies are doing, instead of just saving card on file, they tokenize it with the network. So the thing is, then when you have the card and it expires, the tokenized card, tokenized card might continue to work because it's not connected to the physical one, which is expired. So basically you're granting to Amazon or other wallets an ability to tokenize, create another virtual tokenized version of this card, and then you can use for the payments. That's why uh, Amazon have a lot of like a technical muscles. They implemented it and they're beneficial because then even if your card is expiring, then you might use continued for subscriptions, paying for the goods, et cetera, et cetera. So that's another level of the, um, let's say, technology that is powering up the e-wallets. Uh, we see other regions like a GCC is having and growing a lot with the wallets. Do you see anything big coming as a wallets in European Union? That I think in European Union, um, I think we are already pretty much huge with the wallets. What I mean by this is that uh, the fair share of uh, PayPal is quite big in the market and one of the biggest players. I don't know if we can call Revolut a wallet, but they, it's are, a super sort, they are trying to become a network, sort of a network. And then actually wallet comes out of, I think, network effects. They already have like 50 million customers and like they appear to be quite instant because you are moving the money between network. You're not sending it out. And this shows the potential for the Europe and European players to enhance in this direction. And another one, the last point is Vero. This competitor sort of a two uh, Visa and uh, MasterCard that Europe is trying to create. And it is supposedly will become a wallet by itself. 
Actually, in the recent news, I heard a certain collaboration from big banks with the Vero. So let's see if it's going to reshape the market here. And uh, Revolut is definitely super app because it's one stop shop for everything. Like you can do yeah. investments, you can do a lot of things. And P2P is definitely a big part, which is making like perception as a whole. Really appreciate your time. And it's a pleasure to see you on our platform. Likewise. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, 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 o